use this stuff is it's giving you a, oh, okay, I can build my stuff according to most of the population. Here's my data value that represents 99.5% of the weight. 99.5% of people are going to be less than that <coughs> as far as this information, if this is accurate, which I just made up the top of my head, so it's probably not accurate, but uh, that's, that would be the, the whole idea. How many people understood the interpretation part of that? Good, okay. All right. <coughs> So we do one more example. I'll have you do most of it on your own. Uh, I'll have you go step by step. We'll cover each step individually so you make sure you get it right piece by piece, okay? Do you know that when they, did, I gave you a car example here, like the weight of the seat could support. Uh, did you know that when they organize cars and they, they develop them, that they actually take this into account? Especially grip reach. Grip reach is what you can reach without moving forward. So like. All this stuff would be in my grip reach, but this over here would not be in my grip reach. You'd have to move. So if you're driving in a car and you want to change the radio, you don't want to have to go, right? So they're probably not going to put the radio on the back seat or on your dashboard, right? Because you're not going to want to have to do this because you're going to switch lanes and I'm going to, you're going to hit me because I have that kind of luck. I'm like, dang it. There goes Jared changing his, his radio. I get taken out because you want to listen to different songs. Stick with the song, all right? You don't have to change songs when you're driving down the road. You listen to music. You should have your own thoughts. Anyway, whatever. So they, they look at grip reach and, and how long people's arms are in general. And typically, women have shorter arms than, not like this short, but you have know, shorter, right? uh, shorter arms than men. And so what they do is they look at a woman's grip reach for, for that car, and they try to make it so that they don't have to reach too far to, to hit things. Otherwise, that increases accidents, they get sued because they, they made their car incorrectly. Are you with me on this? Make sure? I just said a lot of words in about 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. So here's a car company. They did their own research, and they found out that if they take into account all the women in the United States, which is their market area, that the grip, we, grip reach for women is normally distributed. Is that an important statement? Yes. Absolutely, because otherwise you would not be able to translate this into a standard normal distribution. It's normally distributed, and the mean grip reach is 27 inches. That means that a woman should be able to reach 27 inches and touch something or grab onto something without having to lean. Okay, so from, from her car, she should be able to go and touch something, on average. You're all going to go home and measure arms now, aren't you? <laughs> up to par? Can I make it? Yeah, basically it's just a distance from, from here to your fingertip. Yeah, that's, or, well, your hand closed if they're doing actual gripping onto something. Mean is 27 inches with a standard deviation. By the way, you're always going to get a mean and a standard deviation because it's not just enough to know the average. You have to know how it's spread out, and that's a standard deviation part of this with a standard deviation of 1.3 inches. Here's what a car company wants to do. They don't want to make it so that only 5% of their people can 5% of the people can actually reach something without moving. They want to make it so that 95% of the people can reach something without moving. Does that make sense to you? So what we want to do is find the reach that represents the top or longest 95% of the population. You know, let me change value to, to grip reach just so we're specific here. Find the grip reach at 
that's supposed to say grip reach, that represents the longest 95% of women. Grip reach room is normally distributed. That's great. Got a mean of 27 inches, standard deviation 1.3. No problem. We can use that information just a little bit. We want to find the longest 95%. So that only the women with the 5% of women who have really short arms will have to reach for something. Does this make sense to you? So 95% of the women in, in the world in the United States will be able to reach reach out and touch this. Maybe it's a CD player they're putting in there. And we'll figure out how far away they can put it. So that 95% of the population can reach it with no problem, and the other 5% maybe has to reach it a, a, a tad bit. Are you ever going to make it so that everyone can reach it? What if someone has no arms? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they could. Have, I mean, I see a woman drive with her feet. I drive my knee all the time. Don't ever say that. <laughs> make a U-turn. It's. <laughs> work on my hip flexors. Got that. So we're going to make it so that 95% of the ladies can do this with no, no issue, all right? The only time you're ever going to have this with really, realistically, no problem is if you had it in the center of your steering wheel and, and then someone just put in the CD, but that would be bad because as soon as your airbag popped, boom, CD in the chest. <laughs> you're done. Uh, you don't want to do that. So what's the first step? That hurt, actually. <laughs> What's the first step in, in doing this problem? What are you going to do? Draw a picture. Draw a picture. That's your first step. Draw a picture. And, we'll, and stop after that. We'll do it together. By the way, every picture looks the same as far as the start goes. Are yours always lopsided? Yes. <laughs> you get better as you go. This is taking me. Uh, 12 years to perfect my distribution. Now the important part is not drawing this picture, it's figuring out where to put your line. We're looking for the longest 95% of women's grip. So the first thing I've told you to do here is identify the 50 mark. Okay? Identify, just go to 50-50. Identify what's the longest and what's the shortest. Which side represents the longest 50%? Is that the left side or the right side? Mm -hmm. This is the longest. Okay? This would be short, long, short. It's always climbing. So this is the longest 50% of, of women's arms. This is the shortest 50%. This would be like the longest 10%, right? This is the longest 50%. This would be like the longest 60%, 70%. We want the longest 95%. So your picture should look something like, like that. It doesn't have to be precise, but it has to uh, at least be on the correct side. How many people were able to draw that picture? <clears throat> How many people put it over here? Raise your hand. Okay, not everyone raised their hand. So uh, we'll, we'll try this again. It, you only have two options, right? How many people put it over here? Raise your hand. Good for you. How many people put it over here? Raise your hand. That's okay. If you made a mistake, you're just learn you're learning. That's fine. Uh, just make sure that you're starting with the 50-50, that might help you. Start with the 50-50 and increase the side that you need. So if we want the, if this is longest and you need more than 50%, go that way. If you need less than 50%, go that way. If you'd start with the shortest, this is shortest, if you need more than 50%, go this way. Less, this way. Does that make sense to you? That's where you start. So here we got the longest 95%. We'll translate that to a decimal. What's this as a decimal? 0 0.05. Okay, great. Can you tell me what's the next thing that you should be doing at this point? Z-score. Very good. Z-score. Find me a Z-score. Find me a Z-score. Can I this? Do you think we'll be in positive Z-score or negative Z-score? Probably, probably negative because our tables look like like that. So negative z-scores. And last thing, ladies and gentlemen, will we be looking, should we be looking for a number over here in the sides or here in the, we'll call this the body? Definitely the body, because I'm giving you an area. I'm giving you the probability. Have you all found the z-score? Yeah. 
Did you look up 0.95 or did you look up 0 0.05? Why 0 0.05? So we need to know in every case the area to the right and left. That we need to know both because you're going to be finding the area to the left all the time. So we look up the 0 0.05 on the body of your table that will give you a corresponding z-score or you use inverse normal and just plug in 0 0.05. That's the area to the left. In either case, you should get... Wait, 1.6 or 5 or negative? negative. Is a negative important? Yes. yes. Are you done? No. No, this is not inches. This is a z-score that's representing your data value right now that you're still looking for. So right now what I'd like you to do is the next step. And the next step is take that z-score in combination with your mean and standard deviation, find me the x value now. If you look for the um, 0.85 on the graph, you won't find the negative 1.64. No, you get positive. You get positive? Yeah. Yeah, that's the whole deal, right? You've got to have that picture right. Because if you have it over here, and you look at 0.95, you are going to get positive 1.645. And you're going to design your car so that instead of having only 5% of women not be able to reach it, only 5% of women will be able to reach it. That'd be a bad thing. So if it's negative, you look for the outside all the time. And if it's positive, you look for the inside. Backwards. Backwards. If you're looking for an area on the left that's smaller than 50%, your z-score will be negative. If you're looking for an area that's greater than 50%, your z-score will be positive. No, I know, but you look, up, you look for the, um, the outside range, like the outside number, right? Not, not what you shaded, but... I haven't shaded. Notice how I haven't shaded anything. I have, you actually don't even need to shade your graph on this. You shouldn't be shading your graph on this. This represents a split. This graph represents a split. If you're shading, that's, that's fine, but notice that you're just taking a value that's representing a, a separation between the lowest and highest of some number, or shortest and longest, or lightest and heaviest of these, these values. So when you draw your picture, I don't care about the shading. What I care about is you have this line in the appropriate spot, these numbers are correct, and you're always looking up the area on the left. That's what I care about. Okay, always on the left. That will give you the appropriate z-score. Did that make sense to you? Okay, now, when you find your x value, x, of course, is the mean plus the z times the standard deviation. So in our case, x is the mean, which was 27, plus the z, which is, what's the z again? I'm going to put that in parentheses so you know that's a negative. That way we don't lose that. Times 1.3. So order operation says we're going to take negative 1.645 times 1.3 and then add on that 27 to it. What do you get? You should get something less than 27, shouldn't you? Yeah. What was that value again? Let's just leave it 86, 24.86. But that is, that's now in inches. You see, this isn't in inches. You can't leave it here. We found the data value in inches. So what this represents, here's the interpretation. I have to leave you with this. Uh, the interpretation is if you build your car with a grip reach for your CD player of 24.86 inches, 95% of women will be able to reach it with no problem. 5% of reachable women will have to reach a little bit to reach that CD player. How many people understood the interpretation? Also, if you work backwards, if you found a z-score for this, you know what your z-score is going to be? I hope you do. You better. What's your z-score supposed to be for this? It's, it's that, right? That's how we got that value. If you look at that, it's going to give you this, this area to the left and right. It's not like we're doing anything different, we're just working in a different direction. Did you understand today, folks? Yeah.